guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Kristen. I just want to welcome you into my world of books and all things book related. Since we are creeping slowly into the month of September, y'all, I thought it would be fun to do a list of anticipated books for the remainder of 2022. These are books that have kind of just gotten on my radar that I'm pretty excited about reading in the next four months, and I thought it would be cool to share it with you guys and also see what you are looking forward to reading as well. And so with that being said, let's dig in. Okay, so the first book is called Real Bad Things, and that is coming out September 1st of 2022, here in just a few days. And this book is by Kelly J. Ford, and it starts off in this place called Maud Bottoms, Arkansas. Say that 10 times fast. And it surrounds the disappearance of this man named Warren. Now, Warren is Jane Mooney's stepfather. He's a violent alcoholic who is just not a very nice guy. And when he disappears, everybody just kind of assumes that he got drunk and drowned in the river. I mean, they don't really have high expectations for this guy. Um, however, the twist is his stepdaughter, Jane, she confesses to his murder. She's ready to do her time, but with no body, no evidence, they can't really put her away. She moves away from the small town, goes on with her life. 25 years later, the river floods and a body surfaces and the talk of Warren's murder kind of resurfaces in this town. And Jane, who is now in her 40s, she returns to this town. Um, she's ready to just make things right with her mom. She's ready to do time in jail for this crime that she committed so long ago. And it says, but though Jane's homecoming may enlighten some, it could threaten others because in this desolate river valley, some secrets are better left undisturbed. And so there's apparently a lot going on in this town. People have secrets that they do not want brought to the surface. And I thought this one looks super exciting and a good way to kick off the month of September. Okay, so the next book is The Guest House by Robin Morgan Bentley. And this book follows a couple named Jamie and Victoria who are looking for a kind of last quick getaway before the birth of their child. And so they choose this remote country guest house that is miles from civilization. They can avoid distractions and just, you know, kind of get away from their regular life before their baby is born. And everything seems great when they first get there. The owners of this place named Barry and Fiona, they seem to go out of their way to make their guests happy and are more than accommodating to Jamie and Victoria so they're super happy to be there. However, when they wake up the next day, Barry and Fiona are nowhere to be found. Their cell phone and their car keys are gone and all the doors are locked. So they have no way to get out of this house, no way to call for help, and guess what happens? She starts having contractions. In real life, that would be a really shitty situation to find yourself in, but for this book, I think it sounds very intriguing and I am very interested to read it. And it says, Disturbing and irresistible, the guest house is devilish, jaw-dropping, and completely unpredictable with twists perfect for fans of Riley Sager and Mary Kub Kubica. Kubica? Am I saying that right? I always just completely butcher the name. So if that's not right, just, you know, bear with me. Hang in there. But this one sounded really, really good. And this one comes out September 13th. I don't remember if I said that. September 13th is when The Guest House comes out. Okay, so the next book is Always the First to Die by R.J. Jacobs. And this one is also for fans of Riley Sager. It says, for fans of Riley Sager with a classic sl slasher twist comes a chilling thriller set on an iconic horror movie mansion. That's a perfect place for a book. And the woman trying to survive a second time. One movie set, one stranded cast, one person ready to make them all pay. That sounds like an isolated mystery. I'm there for it. And it follows this woman named Lexi, who back when she was a teenager, she worked on this movie with this legendary horror director um, at this Pinecrest Estates. Now, Pinecrest Estates has since become this dilapidated mansion. It's basically a place of horror in itself right now, in present day. And a bunch of shady shit went down while they were filming the movie. I guess somebody died and Lexi fled and vowed never to return because of all the stuff that went down. Now fast forward to present day, her daughter goes there looking for answers. Don't know what answers she needs, but she's looking for answers. Lexi follows her, there's a hurricane going on, and apparently there's somebody on the island that wants to make them pay for whatever happened back in the day. I don't know, but this one sounds like a good isolated mystery. I'm excited for it. It comes out September 13th, and yeah, pick yourself up a copy. I'm just gonna say, I think this is gonna be a winner. Okay, so the next book is called The Butcher and the Wren by Elena Urquhart, and this is one of the ones that I am most excited about. I don't know why, because I don't 
really know a whole lot about the book but it just gives me those jack the ripper vibes and like i'm totally all in and invested and i want to run out and buy the book like the day it comes out when it, when it comes to jack the ripper like give me a front row seat and i'm gonna read a little bit of the excerpt because i don't have everything memorized you guys just bear with me i don't have everything memorized so just like you know if i'm looking down that's what i'm looking at i've got my laptop here um and it says something dark is lurking in the louisiana bayou that's a perfect setting for a book like i want to go to louisiana so bad i want to go visit new orleans the french quarter that is like like one of my top places on my bucket list to travel I I just I don't know I've always been obsessed with that place but it says a methodical killer with a penchant for medical experimentation is hard at work completing his most harrowing harrowing I cannot talk harrowing crime yet taunting the authorities who desperately try to catch up and then it follows this forensic pathologist named dr. Ren Mueller so they're butcher and the wren and and apparently she is just trying to figure out who this guy is the bodies are piling up and it's pretty much a game of cat and mouse between the two and i'm so excited about this book it looks so sick and so twisted and you know i'm like front row seat for stuff like that so the next book is imposter by bradley godfrey and this also comes out on the 13th so this book follows two sisters named lillian and rosie who at one time were as close as could be however when their parents died that kind of ripped them apart three years have passed and rosie reaches out to lillian Lillian, admitting that she's got something really important to tell her she needs to meet up and so they do they meet up they're driving along of course on this icy road and before Rosie has a chance to tell Lillian anything they get in this car wreck Lillian survives without any injuries Rosie however has a traumatic brain injury and she's unable to communicate anything and so Lillian kind of is convinced that somebody purposefully caused the crash so she starts to dig into Rosie's past and try to figure out what was up, exactly what she might have been ready to tell her. And it says, the closer Lillian comes to the truth, the more danger she and Rosie find themselves in. But Lillian is certain of one thing. She abandoned her little sister once before and will never do so again, even if it means sacrificing everything. So I thought this one sounded like a good one as well. And again, this comes out September 13th. Okay, so the next book is called Lucky Girl by Mary Rickard. And it says on the title, it says this is a Krampus story, which I was like, when I saw that, I'm like, oh my gosh, is this gonna be a little cheesy? But the premise behind it sounds pretty interesting, so I still included it on my list, so we will see. Um, this one follows a struggling writer named Ro, and the holiday season is quickly approaching. Um, Ro is really a lonely person. Um, she doesn't have anybody really there for her. So she meets these four strangers in a local diner one night who seem as lonely as she is, and she invites them over for an impromptu Christmas dinner. And it says, and when the party seems in danger of an early end, she suggests that they tell each other a good story one that is seasonally appropriate but Ro will come to learn that the horrors hidden in a Christmas tale or one's past can never be tamed or unleashed so I think the moral of the story is do not invite complete strangers over to your house no matter how lonely you are I don't know how I feel about this one I don't know if it's gonna end up being kind of cheesy but I'm interested I want to know so I wanted to add it to the list and you know put it on your radar as well this one also comes out September 13th I cannot remember if I said that before I, if I'm repeating myself just you know ignore whatever but anyway Moving on to the next one. Okay, so the next book is called The Nurse by Claire Allen. And this one says on Amazon, it says a completely gripping psychological thriller for 2022 that you will not be able to put down. So I think I had to add that one to my list as well because, you know, we all want a book we can't put down. We want to binge it in one day and not be able to put it down. So this book follows a woman named Nell Sweeney who is a nurse at a local hospital. She just lives a very ordinary life. She walks to and from the hospital every single day thinking nothing bad can happen to her. However, she is wrong because one day, she is taken and apparently somebody has been watching her and her routine so they know you know where she's gonna be and it just says because someone out there has a secret someone out there has been watching Nell and they've been watching others like her too Nell is the unlucky one she was in the wrong place at the wrong time and if she isn't found soon someone might make sure that she is not the last one to disappear so I don't know if this person has just a vendetta against nurses or what is happening, but I mean, with a title like that, you can't pass it up, right? And this one comes out September 13th as well. Okay, so the next book is called Sometimes People Die by Simon Stevenson. And this one is released on September 20th of 2022. And this one follows a young doctor who is returning to practice after he has been suspended for stealing opioids, having a heck of a time finding a job. So he goes to this struggling hospital called St. Luke's. And this is a hospital full of obviously sick patients, overworked staff, underfunded. So this doctor starts to recognize kind of a pattern and seeing that patients are dying at a pretty rapid rate. Obviously, you know, 
people do die when they're in a hospital, but the patients here at St. Luke's are dying at a very rapid rate that is kind of above the norm. And it says, amid the maelstrom of sick patients, overworked staff, and underfunded wards, a more insidious secret soon declares itself. Too many patients are dying and a murderer may be lurking in plain sight. Apparently this author has been a physician in his past so he apparently knows the ins and outs of working in a hospital and so i think this one is going to be kind of a good medical thriller okay so the next book is called the deadline clock by jeffrey deaver jeffrey deaver has always been one of my favorite authors i love the bone collector i love the book and the movie i've read a ton of books by him and so i was really really excited to see this one coming out um, in september it comes out the 27th so this book follows a serial kidnapper who is taking these wealthy women in the small town in maine and he is demanding a huge ransom in Bitcoin for their safe return. So the latest victim's husband is apparently not able to come up with that huge ransom amount and it says the term deadline takes on a literal meaning. So the police are completely out of their depth on this one and so this guy named Coulter Shaw who just says he's a reward seeker. It doesn't say he's part of the police department, a detective, anything like that. It just says he's a reward seeker and it says he takes the lead in the investigation Soon he's using his survivalist instincts to uncover clues and pursue suspects, putting his own life on the line to catch the would-be killer before the countdown hits zero. If it's anything like the other Jeffrey Deaver books that I've read, it's going to be kind of an edge of your seat type thriller. I love books where you just cannot put them down and he has definitely delivered on his previous books so I'm super excited about this one. Okay so the last book for the month of September is called A Familiar Stranger by A.R. Torrey and this book comes out September 27th as well. This book follows a woman named Lillian who who is a wife and a mother. She just lives a very ordinary life. Uh, she has an inattentive husband, a disconnected son. She's very lonely and she meets this guy named David in a local coffee shop. And they start having an affair, uh, one where she creates this entirely new persona for herself. She feels reckless, you know, unpredictable, and yet she feels more wanted than what she has in years. The affair continues until one day evidence of it kind of surfaces on her son's social media. Um, and it says, as lies beget lies, Lillian's two worlds spiral dangerous, dangerously out of control and betrayals run deeper than she imagines because Lillian isn't the only one leading a double life. So that could mean David, that could mean her husband. I mean, who knows? So the premise behind this sounded really interesting. Um, I haven't read anything by this author yet. I've got one other book by him. I guess I guess it's a him, AR, I don't know. I guess it could be a man or a woman um, on my bookshelf, but I haven't read it yet. But I thought this one sounded really, really good to round out the month of September. And now we will move on to October's reads. Okay, moving on to the books that are coming out in October, we're going to kick it off with a John Mars book. Um, he also wrote the book The One, which I have not read yet. It's on my bookshelf to be read, but I haven't read it yet. Um, but I've heard really, really good things about that one. And so I was excited to see this next one coming out, <clears throat> which is called Keep It in the Family. And this one comes out October 18th. So this book follows a couple named Mia and Finn who are turning this derelict home into their dream house. They're remodeling, updating the whole works. And as they're doing this, Mia discovers that she's pregnant. So they get the house to the point where they believe that it's completely ready. And they discover this chilling message that is etched into the skirting board. And it says, I will save them from the attic. And so they go up in the attic and they discover that their dream house was once a house of horrors. There's like been some seriously disturbing shit that has gone on in this house. They make this traumatic discovery, the baby arrives, and, and Mia cannot shake the fact that some monstrous crimes happen in this house. And so she becomes obsessed with finding answers and digging deeper and deeper into the secrets of this home. And that kind of causes tension between her and her husband and kind of pulls them farther apart. Um, and it says, secrecy shrouds the mystery of the attic, but when shards of a dark truth start to emerge, Mia realizes the danger is terrifyingly present. She is prepared to do anything to protect her family, but is it already too late? I think the premise behind this is just so terrifying, like to move into a home that you consider your dream home and then to find out some really awful shit inspired whether it was murder or abuse or whatever of some sort I just think that that would shake me to my core I don't know if I could live in a house that where things like that happen I just don't know um, but I'm really looking forward to this one I've heard John Mars is excellent and so I am super pumped to add this one to my ever-growing TBR list okay so the next book is called The Cabin in the Woods by Sarah Alderson and this one also comes out October 18th and I'm just gonna read you the little excerpt from off of Amazon because it's creepy as shit and 
It says it's an edge of your seat, page flipping stay up all night, heart racing suspense thriller. And I mean, those are all the things that you want in a book. Am I right? Like all the things you want in a thriller. Um, it says, in a cabin in a wood, a woman by the window stood. Glancing out, she thought she heard footsteps whistling something stirred. Hiding here, she fears the night for what's done in the dark will come to light. She must run fast to escape her lie or she'll be the next to die. Cabin in the woods, a woman is there trying to run and hide from her secrets and hoping not to die. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's pretty much all we need to know about this bad boy. Mark your calendars, October 18th. The next book is Dissection by Christina Laporte, and that's all. this also comes out October 18th. So this book follows Dr. Stephen Leeds, a DC heart surgeon who is suddenly overwhelmed with all these heart attack and stroke cases that is caused by this rare arterial injury called a dissection. And each of these victims have received a card that says your heart attack slash stroke will arrive within one hour. Like how creepy is that? I mean, I guess, you know, yay for the like advance warning, but I mean, still, like, what do you do if you receive a card like that? Just go directly to the ER, yes, because <laughs> some shit's about to go down. So the private detective and the FBI agent who are investigating these cases, they immediately think that it could be his former lover, who is a research scientist, and she apparently held a grudge against all of these victims. However, when these cards start going to a bunch of prominent people in the U.S. government, um, they begin to realize that there is a much bigger kind of plot going on here and they have to work together to find the actual perpetrators. Um, it says that this is a medical political thriller and I mean it sounded like a good one. I think I like medical thrillers myself. This one intrigued me and I thought I would add that to the list as well. So the next book on the list is Livid by Patricia Cornwell. I love the Scarpetta series. If you guys have never read it, I'm gonna tell you to just run. Run right out. I and mean, these books have been published for years. I don't even remember when the first one was published. This one is number 26. So they've been around for a while. I think, I want to say maybe Postmortem was back in, could have even been the 90s. I don't know. I can't remember, but it, they've been around for a while. These books are so good. The Scarpetta series is one of my favorite series of all time. This one comes out October 25th. So this book starts out with this sensational murder trial that's going on, causing chaos, violent protests, and Kay Scarpetta finds herself as a reluctant witness in this trial. While this trial is going on, Scarpetta receives some shocking news that the judge's sister has been found dead. They write it off as a home invasion and there's no apparent cause of death. However, it says Scarpetta recognizes telltale signs of the unthinkable and she knows the worst is yet to come. The forensic pathologist finds herself pitted against a powerful force that returns her to the past and her time to catch a killer is running out. This is just another Amazeballs book in the series that kind of started it all for me. Back in the day when I started reading a little bit more, this was my go-to series. It was so good. I love the way this author writes and yeah, it was some of my favorites. So I was happy to see another one on the list. Okay, so the final book for October is called The Vanishing Hour by Laura Griffin and it comes out October 25th. And this follows a woman named Ava Birch who is a corporate lawyer. She's just sick of big city life. She decides to move to the small town in rural Texas, kind of where she grew up and just kind of get back to nature and get away from the daily grind that she's used to in the big city. Then one day she is on this volunteer search and rescue mission. She comes across this abandoned campsite. She decides to document it and take pictures of it. She meets this guy named Grant Wyckoff who I don't know it doesn't say if he's like a detective on the police force it just or maybe he's just a local I'm not really sure but she meets him and all he really sees when he looks at her is this just city slicker and he thinks she has no business being on this team of seasoned outdoorsmen you know doing this search and rescue mission. However, the discovery that she made reminds him of an unsolved case where a woman went missing a couple years earlier. As they look into the discovery of the campsite further, another woman goes missing under odd circumstances and they start to realize these occurrences are not just random, that someone is taking these women and they are running out of time trying to find the person who's behind all of this. This one sounded like a really good kind of small town cold case book. Moving on to November titles, we have The Quarry Girls, which comes out November 1st, 2022, and this is by Jess Laurie. This book is set 
in Minnesota in 1977, and it follows, it follows these two girls named Brenda and Heather who have a secret. They have seen something and they have sworn, they've taken a vow not to ever tell another soul. However, when a friend of theirs disappears, which is the second girl to disappear in a week, that vow is kind of tested and they realize that they might need to tell someone what they actually saw. It says, Heather is terrified that the missing girls are connected to what she and Brenda stumbled upon that night. Desperately searching for answers on her own, she learns that no one in her community is who they seem to be. Not the police, not the boys she met at the quarry, not even her parents. But she can't stop digging because she knows those girls are in danger. I think this one sounded really, really good. It's pretty bad when you can't even trust your parents. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, what the hell is going on there? But um, this one comes out November 1st, so be sure to mark your calendars for that one too. The next book is Are You Awake by Claire McGowan. This one comes out November 8th. So this book follows a woman named Mary. She's got two young children. She feels like she has not slept in ages. She's exhausted. And one night she heads to a nearby park. I'm assuming she's got a husband and the kids are home with the husband sleeping. I'm not really sure at this point, but it just says that she seeks solace at a nearby park late one night. And that is where she meets a man named Tim who is also struggling to sleep. And Tim's problems come from not feeling safe enough to sleep. I don't know whether he has nightmares or something bad happens when he sleeps. I'm not really sure. But anyway, these two meet up and as they're there at this park, they witness something horrific, a violent attack at one of the neighboring houses. And it says, bonded by what they've seen, Tim and Mary are desperate to find answers. And when they see news reports of a missing woman who was last seen walking alone, not far from them, the pair are convinced it's her they saw being attacked, no matter what the police say. But with her marriage under strain and the police on their tail, Mary begins to doubt her own mind and Tim's. And as the pair are drawn into a dangerous game of cat and mouse, the culprit appears to be even closer to home than they thought. Have they got it all wrong or is something even more sinister going on? This one sounds pretty creepy. Right off the bat, it makes me wonder, like, are they so sleep deprived that they maybe imagine the whole thing? Or is it something more sinister? I don't know. We'll just have to read it and find out. Okay, so the next book is Secluded Cabin Sleeps Six by Lisa Unger. This comes out November 8th. I'm super pumped for this one. This is one of those isolated mysteries. I've been reading a lot of isolated mysteries lately. I would love it if you would tell me in the comments, what is your most favorite isolated mystery of all time? I've got, I just finished The Guest List by Lucy Foley. Um, I've got Daisy Darker on my TBR. I received that from Book of the Month. And I know I've got some other isolated mysteries on my bookshelf right now, just waiting to be read. And so I would love to hear what your favorite one is. But this one sounds like a really good isolated one. It's three couples that get together. Um, it says they rent a luxury cabin in the woods. Of course, I guess this, this luxury cabin has a personal chef. It's got a hot tub. It's got amazing views. And this whole trip was a birthday gift to this girl named Hannah from her apparently tech mogul brother. He found this place for her and her husband and two other couples that they could go and get together with and have some rest and relaxation, some fun, and just some time away. Um, but however, as all of these isolated mysteries go, you know, there's a storm brewing. Of course, there's got to be a storm. Apparently, the rental host is kind of always there, like on top of them all the time. Um, the personal chef lets them know about the sinister history of this house. Apparently, all of the friends have their own complicated pasts with their own secrets. And it says, how well does Hannah know her brother, her own husband? Can she trust her best friend? And who is the new boyfriend crashing their party? Meanwhile, someone is determined to ruin the weekend looking to exact a payback for deeds long buried who is the stranger among them. And honestly, when I first read this, it reminded me, I don't know if any of y'all play video games, but I, I'm, not, I'm not even ashamed to admit it anymore. I love video games. And it reminded me of Until Dawn. If any of y'all have ever played Until Dawn, raise your hand, my fellow video game mates, because I love that game so much. And this really reminded me of that game, but I am so, so pumped for this book. I cannot wait. I mean, the more isolated mysteries I can get on my bookshelf, the better. Okay, so the last one for the month of November is The Personal Assistant by Kimberly Bell. This one comes out November 29th. Okay, so this book follows a woman named Alex who almost overnight became a super popular influencer online. And this hobby of hers has has now become a full-time job that she realizes she cannot do all on her own. So she hires this woman named AC as a personal assistant to just handle all of the back-end stuff and just help her get through the day-to-day -day work that has to be done. Everything is great until one of her posts, apparently a controversial post that she has goes viral in the worst possible way. Um, apparently it's something she did not want to get out there into the world. And it says, but all of the goodwill of her followers turns to 
toxic when one controversial post goes viral in the worst possible way. Alex reaches out to AC for damage control, but her assistant has gone silent. The young woman Alex trusted with all of her secrets, who had access to her personal information and front row seats to the pressure points in her marriage and her life, is now gone missing. And apparently the police are reaching out to Alex and her husband looking for answers, which they have none because they don't have any idea where this woman is at. And then it says a woman is found murdered and it says she'll find the greatest threat isn't online but in her own living room. Um, apparently it is written in alternating perspectives, which I like that book when you can get alternating perspectives from the characters. Um, it'll go between Alex, her husband, and the mysterious AC. So this one sounds super dark, super creepy. I cannot wait to get my hands on it. Finally, the month of December. The month of December, I could not find all that many books that were being released that month. I don't know if December is just not a big month for book releases or not. Maybe that's just I just don't know. I've never paid attention before, but I only found one and it's called Night Shift by Robin Cook. It is being released December 6th. So this is a medical mystery and it follows two colleagues turned spouses, Dr. Lori Montgomery and Dr. Jack Stapleton, who are already super busy. They've got their plates full, their schedules booked, and Lori gets the shocking news that one of her supposedly healthy longtime friends has passed away suddenly in the parking garage of this hospital. So her death requires an autopsy and and Lori, as the newly appointed chief medical examiner, she asks Jack to take special care of this case, which Jack lets his curiosity get the best of him. He really wants to figure out what happens to this woman. And it says, compelled to resolve the case at hand, he sets out to investigate on site at Ma Manhattan Memorial Hospital, even though it means blatantly defying the Office of Chief Medical Examiner's rules. What started out as an inquiry into Sue's tragic passing soon turns into a deadly and dangerous chess game between Jack and the clever and deranged killer who might just administer another lethal blow if Jack isn't careful. It sounded like a really good medical thriller. But yeah, so that is the only one that I can see that really stood out to me that's being released in December. If you guys know of any other books being released in the last four months of the year, please let me know. I would love to hear about any other creepy thrillers, horror, true crime, whatever you got, throw it my way. And that's a wrap, guys. That's it. That's all I've got for you today. I hope I put some good books on your radar for the remainder of 2022. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.